All right, traders, welcome to today's recap. This is Christian from Hertz Tribeca Trade Group, and it is June 26th. So it's Wednesday. We've got two more days to the end of the month, and uh, we shall see. Uh, don't forget, we have the Russell rebalance on Friday, which I think we are seeing some positioning. Uh, that's, I think, what we talked about last last uh, video that I did after the close, which was on Monday. Uh, yesterday, we we had the uh, the member webinar, which I think we really kind of came came away with a, a nice process and and went through some nice charts yesterday and some uh, you know nice kind of planning for things and and observations for this market. So you know just a couple things. Uh, I'm not going to go over um, obviously what we went over yesterday in the webinar because that is for members. But um, you know one thing I'm going to talk about. I'll get I'll get the negatives out of the way first so you can if you don't want to hear any negatives you can you can mute me or just fast forward the video but um, yeah I mean I, th I think this is going on right now right it's it's the uh, you know the high of the day is basically the open and this is something that I think has been going on for a good couple weeks now uh, where we're just seeing distribution uh, for the most part and sometimes this is a, a bit of a short-term phenomenon. You know, I know last week, obviously, we had one or two really good green days. But I think even on the days that we, you know, besides the FOMC day, uh, the day after the FOMC, remember, was a gap up uh, and then kind of a, a, a sell, take profit day. Uh, and that's just been going on for more often than not. I think it's... I. I don't have the data on for the last couple of weeks how many times we've actually rallied past the open, but it's been few and far between. So this is what I do on a daily basis. You know, a couple points is while this has been going on, while we've been seeing more distribution, meaning just more selling every day, sellers are coming in uh, and taking advantage of any of any gains. Now, again, it doesn't seem to be every group that's like today was kind of mixed. Even though the indices finished lower where they where they um, opened, you know, again, and the main thing is you know the percentage for the day. But uh, what I've been monitoring is just buy if buyers are coming into this market and if they are, what areas of the market are they coming into? So the you know energy has been up and down for the last couple of days. Sometimes we we do see it kind of move down. But today um, buyers kind of buyers did come into some energy groups. Um, XME, which is something that I've been talking about for the last week, the metals and mining ETF. Remember last I think it was either last Thursday or Friday of last it was towards the end of last week. Uh, we saw big January calls go up. Uh, you know what? Now that I think about it, it might have been midweek la last week uh, that we saw a bunch of January positioning in the metals and mining ETF. So what did we see today? Uh, today we saw the short-term stuff. We saw we saw July calls really active. If you're not familiar with this ETF, you, again, can you you can go to the um, to the issuers page. You could go to State Street. Just you know, Google XME top holdings. But it's basically a mix of mining. Well, as it says, right? But metals is really steel. So it's, there's a lot of steel companies in here. There's also a lot of gold miners, and there's a regular, and there's a lot of regular miners too. Now it kind of dovetails with what we've been seeing a little bit in single stock flow. Like we've been seeing a repeat buyer in Alcoa. Uh, we've been seeing some gold miner flow uh, on the call side as well. So it's a nice ETF, but you have to kind of be bullish both on. Uh, both on the steel and on the gold miners, which sometimes are two completely different groups, I think. But um, how does this XME trade? So I was able to take my first target. I had started a position last week when we saw all that call flow. And um, and then I, I added to today, this was like right in here um, where we saw that call flow today. And the thing actually um, had a nice trending day. So, you know, this is a good example. It's There are some things that are trending, but I would say that they're very few and far between, right? So, you know, I had one go against me today too. I had Dominion uh, Energy, which is a utility, um, fall out of bed today. It was down 2% today. So it's like, hey, great XME, but on the Dominion, uh, not so good. And I will probably add to that position one more time. As the utilities, right? If you go back to my screen on what underperformed, which again is a little bit different than what we've seen. We've seen the utilities really outperform the last couple of weeks. But TLT was down today, and maybe that was an excuse to um, to sell. Um, also, I think one of the consumer staples, I think it might have been General Mills, sold off today. So you could see all of the um, uh, interest rate sensitive 
groups uh, actually underperformed today. And the, the defensives, which have been the leaders of the market until today, uh, but just in general, I think those defensives has, have really outperformed. They finally gave back some some uh, some gains. Also, the healthcare names were down today. I don't know if that's because uh, you know ahead of the Democratic debates, maybe some weak hands in there. Um, XBI, which was a trade that I was in, I got stopped out on this today on the 200-day moving average. Again, trading stock, uh, you know, it's tough to really cheer about a loser, but um, <laughs> I did not trade this. I talked about. Um, the difference between trading stock and options, you know, I've lost, I think, a couple hundred, two hundred and thirty dollars or something on, you know, going long 100 shares of, of XBI. So to me, that's fine. If I would have traded it in options, it probably would have been a much bigger loser uh, because that does get magnified. So, I, you know, and I'll be monitoring this XBI. Um, clearly, I was looking for a move um, outside of value into this version point of control. Hey, it didn't get it, and you have to adjust. And and I think that also is the main thing to kind of realize in this market is you, I don't think I think it's very difficult to kind of just sit with the with the bumps. Uh, I think you just have to kind of say, hey, I'm going to get in, have a basically have a trading plan, right? Say, hey, I'm going to get into this trade. What am I looking for? Well, I'm looking for a move up to 92. If it starts in it, and if it gets back below my you know my breakout area. Then I just abandoned it, and and you know, unfortunately, you're going to get a little bit chopped up and whipsawed in this market right now. But I, I you know, I think it's better just looking at. Um, and again, this is a very short-term view, but we're we're in a distribute. We've been in this distribution zone now, where again, where the um, the highs of the day are in the beginning of the day, and. Um, and the lows of the day are, are at the end. So that that has to flip around. And I've said this in these videos before. I don't think it, you know, it could just take one day or two uh, to kind of get the buyers back into this market. But, um, you know, it could be a combination of the G20. Uh, people are uneasy about that. It's also the summertime as well now. So that's also, I, I think, a little bit of a factor as well. But, um, I, you know, I think right now, I, I think, being very choosy, uh, being picky, uh, and and only trying to hold you know their best positions, play the best hands, are are really for this market. Um, the other thing that I've been showing a lot in the in the room in the trading room is the VIX. Uh, you know the VIX was basically flat today. Uh, it was actually down 40 basis points, but it rose all day long. It did the same thing yesterday. So again, super super short term view. You know I'm looking at the five minute bar in the VIX. Um, if you zoom out, it's not that scary. But what is this showing me? It's just showing me right now that volatility is kind of bid throughout the day. And every time we come into one of these moving averages, like the purple line on my chart here is the 50 period moving average. Anytime we come into, re so this was yesterday, right? Uh, VIX was higher. We re retested and bounced in the VIX. We retested and bounced. Did it again and again and again. In the overnight session, which I don't really look at, the VIX went down. But once we opened up again, the VIX is bid again. <laughs> so, you know, again, test to 50, bounce, test to 50, bounce, test to 50. So for now, let this play out. You know, I mean, the, 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 the object here, as always with trading, is when the, opportuni when the opportunities are there, you know, you want to hit the accelerator and really capitalize on it. But when the opportunities are not there, you want to you want to you want to change what you're doing a little bit. You want to back off. Uh, you you want to back off and and just kind of be patient and let it play out until the buyers have control of the market again because they don't right now um, and that's the situation. Now I know um, you know some option activity has been actually pretty good. Um, I also threw on here by the way just to just to um, further just give a couple other bullets on this. Uh, so mixed right yesterday when I brought this up in the trading room. And when we went over this in the webinar yesterday, this was mainly all red. I think there was one thing, which was the gold miners. By the way, look at the gold miners again. Finished finished down on the day, but look at the buyers come back into the gold miners. Again, and, and again, that's a good portion of that XME ETF. But um, that's what you want to see. You know, Even though that finished down 40 basis points on the day, you, know, you want to see more groups trend like the gold miners are doing right now. Um, 
so again this is a this is a slight this I'm sorry this is a much better picture than yesterday even though I don't think this is a great picture um, you could see some of these groups that are you know besides the today was like I said the defensives that um, sold off biotech uh, the software group I wanted to, to just talk a minute about the software group right definitely previous leader of the market uh, and I would say for for most of 2019 has shown the the leadership in the market but right now it's it's also under a distribution phase these are just a handful of names that are in software there's so many other names but your Salesforce you know a lot of these names finish so let's go through a couple of these names right so for example look at um, service now right for the day right so so again it's coming in so again you have to kind of this could be a nice dip to buy but this has been going on now for a couple of weeks and we noted this last week with names like Twilio uh, they're just opening on the highs and you know they're getting sellers are coming in so this just you just have to let this play out right so look at today now who's who, first of all who did this um, and I saw this, you know, this is like, and I'll show you the chart of Twilio too last, last week, but ServiceNow, who the hell did this up to 285 this morning? Uh, and, um, and it hung in there on the, on another five minute bar and then sellers are whacking this thing down. So again, have to let this play out. I think it's starting to look interesting into support, into, uh, the daily chart, but I'm not really willing to stick my neck out. Um, in these names again this was last this was what Thursday of last week same thing I, I, I doesn't make any sense to me here's another one back here where somebody is like uh, just trading like an idiot um, and putting a print all the way up here in the beginning of the day which is the high of the day uh, it's really odd to me and I'm sure I can find that too in the um, so here's another one right another day where service now prints at 292 and then it sells off the whole day it is like uh, 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 you know uh, really amateurish trading um, so you can look at Twilio we noticed this last week in Twilio in the room I mean here's Twilio again so like who's doing that in the beginning why why would anybody do that in the beginning of the day I, I it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me uh, and like is somebody getting destroyed by doing that I I don't bidding it up like this or are they you know bidding it up with a small amount of volume and then selling it hard I, you know trying to trying to fake out people and then selling it the rest of the day because look at it it's really closed on the low of the day so my point is this is not what you want it like when something like this happens in a stock or in a group of stocks because I could probably point out about three or four of them like here was another one uh, you know, so this you this you do not want to be buying into, in my opinion. Of course, video is for information purposes only, I'm not giving out any advice, but um, it makes you almost want to say, I want to short this whenever this uptick is here um, while this trend is going on, right? And so this has been going on now. Like I said, we looked at Twilio last week. Here's another one. Here's another one uh, where it absolutely gets bid up in the beginning of the day and then smoked so what so closely you know so what what i would be watching for this tomorrow would i be uh here's a question would i be buying on the first five minute bar of twilio <laughs> I, I would be just kind of waiting to see if it could actually trend and and it usually i don't think you really have to wait too long to figure this out it's the first two minute uh two bars which on this i'm, I'm on the five minute but um so let this play out you know when i put together the, the weekend video uh, i did not mention one software name um for the for members because uh this is going on right now and you kind of just have to let it play out uh, i gave a setup last night in roku and it's pretty funny because i said in roku you could look for a bounce to basically 94 and I've got that in our email that I sent out uh, last night. I said, hey, this this Roku really got oversold. But a lot of times, the, you know, what we're seeing right now in this market is a bounce and fades, bounces and fades for the, for the majority of stocks. Again, like I said, I was going to get through the bad news first. But we talked about how this thing got to a 10 RSI 
uh, at the end of the day yesterday. So you you know this was for a two dollar bounce in the stock, and then you get out. And I think a couple of people did that in the trading room uh, today for Tulio. So we really mapped this thing out. Um, there was a VPOC taken out, I think, uh, which got me interested in the name for just a quick bounce. But right now, like this, for these momentum names, this is how you have to play. Um, if you're going to, I mean, look at this thing down to 90, it went in the overnight session. But you got your bounce and right into the right into resistance. Again, the value area is providing excellent places to say, get out. You know, if you get those first three bars. Um, but again, right now, this is the market that we're given. This is what most names are doing. Um, a few, so a couple names that buck the trend. Right, we talked about XME, which which um, trended for the day. Newell is another one where I, I tell you, you know, so I have a love hate relationship with call buying. Uh, and, and option activity, but some of the names that we've been seeing, like so Newell, we saw Newell calls go up yesterday, right? Here was the spike on the Newell calls. Now, again, you have to really be uh, like a surgeon with how you're picking, like following option activity. A lot of times if you wait, right? A lot of times if you if you don't buy on this, or if you did buy in the first five minutes, you're doing the scaling in approach, right? And then you're saying, okay, well, I understand. I like Newell for the long term, but look at this thing go up and, and out and to the right. Now, again, it's still into resistance, but it did get over yesterday's highs. So, you know, for a little bit of a trade, this thing trended. Um, great catch by a couple of our traders in the room today with JD. Uh, I did not trade this one, but they did. And they found a huge winner today. I think this was the best... Um, Chinese internet name up 5.7%. So this one trended, right? So it is difficult to, I think it's harder to find trending names, but they are out there. Um, and, and again, you know, I, I'm sorry to advocate, but you know, this, this is why you would belong to a trading room, right? I mean, uh, we've got, uh, one of my colleagues and I were talking about this last night over dinner. And, um, you know, it's really the beauty of the trading room is you've got a number of people who are willing to share ideas and it doesn't get any better than that. Right. And, and we're also, you know, not only myself, but many members that I have in the room are also uh, putting out their their, you know, their trade entries, what strike, what price and they're putting their exits. So it is really a phenomenal idea generation. Uh, and then also, you know, I, I see some people all the time, they try to follow option activity, but they're not in a trading room. I think that is like, uh, you know, to try to do something like that, to try to follow option activity off of Twitter, uh, <laughs> you know, I would say spend a hundred bucks or whatever it is. You know, my membership is, is 129 a month, right? That is, that is nothing. If you were trying to position yourself using option flow and again you don't have to join my room but there's a lot of there's a lot of really good uh trading rooms out there i know many get bad names because there's a there's a couple really bad parties out there i won't name any names but there are some really good you know uh rooms that i think they're just well worth uh, especially if you're trying to follow option activity and you're not paying for for you know either trade alert or if you're not you know asking somebody who's got uh, you know, trade alert up all day long or, or another system. So anyway, that's quick, quick spiel about that. But I, I just think if you're trying to, if you're putting out money, I, I would personally never trade options if you did not have a scanner <laughs> or if you're, you know, if you're doing it off of option activity, it's different if you've got your own system and you're really disciplined and you're using support resistance and so on and so forth. But I think if you're like trying to scan what other people post on Twitter uh, first of all, every everybody who posts things is gonna be is not is late, right? I mean, my first when I post option activity on Twitter, it's probably about a minute late from when it hits the tape, uh, because my first priority is to get it in the and get it into our trading room and to talk about it and and you know give some sense of whether I like it or not, and then I'll post it on public uh, Twitter. And I think for the most part, that's what other people are doing. So anyway, uh, again not a sales pitch, but I just think if that's how you're rolling um, and you're putting, you know, if you're paper trading, 
but you know following option activity but if you're putting real money to work and you're not you know you're not investing into into you know having a collaborative trading room i i think you want to sec you want to reevaluate how you're spending your money because a hundred bucks a month or or even some rooms are more than mine they're 200 bucks a month that should be nothing compared to how you're trading but anyway that's just a thought um what else sorry i i do go off on tangents um a couple other one is we'll go over a few other option trades for the for the day um, there were Baba calls that came in in the beginning of the day, but then there was puts. It seems it's very funny with Baba. It seems like um, when it gets a bounce, people are looking to sell it. Uh, because I saw put activity several times. You could see again, you know, another tough name you can't chase, cannot chase. Uh, I think right now, if I had to put a percentage off the top of my head, I think, you know, names that start this way in the beginning of the day and that carry probably about 10% of the names um, that start off this this way in the last couple of weeks. So that's it for uh, today's video. Um, what else? BHP was another one where, where we saw calls. SE, which has been a beast, um, continues to see call flow as well. Um, one trade that we did at the end of the day, uh, KBH. I'll just, I'll review this one. Uh, so KBH is up nicely. I decided to go into DHI. Uh, remember, Lenar got absolutely smoked the other day. Uh, there was, now, I didn't see this crossed. There's a big block of DHI July calls that went up. Usually when you see something like this, like there was a big block of, of Tesla puts, but they were crossed. Um, the DHI calls that went up, 11,000 of these, $800,000 short term. Usually when you see something like this, it's um, it's against shares, but I looked and I, I couldn't match it up with a print. So I kind of, and again, a lot of the option activity for me is just ideas, just like, you know, a lot of traders in our room posting, um, you know, posting trades that they're posting charts that they're interested in. Um, if you look at the one hour here in DHI, uh, you'll be able to see that there was a virgin point of control that was taken out. And I'll just wait for Thinkorswim to adjust here for a couple of seconds. Yep, oh, there it is right there. So um, I played, I went long uh, for an overnight trade. And again, the plan with this is to, you know, put on, you know, to, to practice what I'm preaching and say, hey, you know, some trades where I think the, the risk to reward is pretty good, put on the trade right at the end of the day and then look to take it off right on the open. So I think the home builders are, got a little bit oversold with, Lenar's earnings call uh, and somebody coming into DHI with you know the idea that maybe KB, KBH actually has some good numbers so you know regardless of what this does in the beginning of the day I will be you know taking off a good chunk of uh, and I did this trade um, I bought the July 43 calls and you know if we get a little bit of a bounce maybe up to 43 I'll be out all right, so that's it for today's video. I uh, hope that uh, you are finding these videos helpful, and I'll see you guys in the trading room bright and early tomorrow morning. Have a great night, everybody.